Morning, another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the iPhone 13 mini, the Bimba iPhone. But if you're not familiar, I'm gonna go through my normal day. My SIM card is in this phone. We're gonna talk about some of the features that I like and don't like. I'll take some photos on it and some of its competitors put that up on the screen so you can see how that does. And we'll also check in on the battery, all while we explore a bit. But first things first. Doesn't happen often, but there's a new coffee shop in my neighborhood, a place where there are already a lot of coffee shops. But I want to check it out, so that's where we're at. Coffee, check. And this is a place called Pink Frog Cafe. The owner, while in art school, wanted to create a cafe where people could hang and there could be performances by local artists, which frankly, you don't really see as much in my neighborhood anymore as you used to. So that's kind of cool. And it's actually massive in here with like the stadium seating. It's not something you usually get in New York City. Now I apologize in advance if you watched any of my other iPhone 13 real world tests, as there's gonna be some overlap in what I'm saying. Now the design of the iPhone 13 mini is very similar to the design of the iPhone 12 mini. It's a hair thicker and heavier, technically speaking, but you wouldn't notice it if I didn't tell you. The notch is smaller though, by about 20%, and that's always welcome. And the cameras on the back are now larger and diagonal instead of vertical. And that's how people will know you have a new iPhone 13 mini and not the old one. And the way that it kind of lines up with the rest of the series is that the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 mini are one tier with identical features besides the size of the phone, which also means a smaller screen and battery. And then the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max are another tier, sharing the exact same features again between them with just different sizes. So again, the screen and battery is different in those as well. Now the big thing here though, of course, is that the mini is very tiny. It's so tiny, in fact, compared to most other smartphones nowadays at least, that people actually feel the need to tell you how tiny it is whenever you take it out. It's shocking to people, honestly. But of course, if you were considering the Mini, that's exactly why you want it, right? Speaking of maybe wanting the Mini, let's talk about today's sponsor, Navi. Navi is a completely free service that lets you look for a new phone, like the iPhone 13 mini, for example. And it'll automatically search over 3 million daily deals from each US carrier, plus the manufacturers like Apple and Samsung, and retail places like Best Buy to find you the very best deal on it. You can even put in your current phone and your current carrier, and it'll compare the trade-in values from all the different places on top of that to get you the best deal, plus the most money for your phone, and let you know if it might even be worth switching carriers to. Now again, it's completely free. So head to the link below, sign up for a free account, and see what deals you could be getting. Thanks to Navi for sponsoring this video. I don't care what the date is. When the trees start to look like this, it is winter. I don't like winter. I don't even mind the cold. It's this grayness and the fact that the sun goes away way too soon in the day. <sighs> Regardless though, we're in McCarran Park. It's kind of like the local park to my neighborhood. It's actually between my neighborhood of Williamsburg and the neighborhood where my studio is in Greenpoint, just above it. Now it's not as big as Prospect Park, which is kind of like Brooklyn's Central Park. It was actually designed and built by the same people who made Central Park, and it's definitely not as big as Central Park, which is our biggest park around here. But it is kind of situated perfectly between two very busy young neighborhoods. And so during the summer especially, it is usually packed with people, just like all the pieces of grass here have people in them. It's a lot of fun. Less so on a gray, cold winter day. But with the little bit of sunlight we have left, Let's talk about the screen. Now the screen on the 13 mini is very similar to the 12 mini. Apparently the brightness on the iPhone 13 mini is 25% uh, more than on the iPhone 12 mini, but even putting them side by side, I can't really tell and I don't think you'll probably notice. And regardless, the 12 and the 13 minis both 
and all of the series actually, I can see just fine in broad daylight. So that's all that really matters. Now going for the 13 Pro or the Pro Max will get you a slightly brighter than that screen, but also, 120 hertz display. Basically that means it'll refresh up to 120 times a second instead of the usual 60 times a second. Now this allows for smoother animation, smoother scrolling, and gameplay. And it is a feature that I do appreciate about the Pro models, but it is very subtle. Honestly, I've always kind of noticed it more on Android phones than I ever do on iPhones. I don't know why that is. Okay, and I think the next place we go now, it needs to have a fireplace. I know someone's gonna say something. Yes, I do have a very bright hat on. I just like to make sure that if there's ever an avalanche from the non-existent mountains nearby, you'll be able to find me. Even Sweet Green isn't sure which one it is. I agree, Sweet Green. Hi, Dad. Hey, Dad. I like the uh, bright orange hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a place called Shelter. And it was for a long time, me and a couple of friends of mine's go-to bar in the neighborhood as soon as it got cold out. It's Argentinian and it has great empanadas and pizza and the bartenders are always fun, but the vibe is very ski lodge, I would say, which feels just right when it's cold. And considering Argentina apparently has some of the best skiing in the world, which I didn't know before I came here, I just kind of always pictured a warm place when I think of Argentina, but that actually makes a lot of sense. My dad though has never been here. So having dinner with him tonight by the all important fireplace. Okay, one of the differences with the iPhone 13 mini that might push the upgrade from the 12 mini is that we actually do have some new cameras. We still have the same as the 12's ultra wide camera and a 12 megapixel f 2.4 aperture on paper. But here it is side by side with the iPhone 12 mini so you can judge for yourself. But also the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max which have slightly faster f 1.8 apertures so should let in more light as well. Now, as for the main sensor, we have the same 12 megapixel and f 1.6 aperture as last year's models. But the sensor itself is a decent chunk larger with 1.7 micron size pixels versus the 1.4 of last year, which just means that it should collect more light as the larger the pixel, the more light it can capture. And again, here it is side by side with the 12 mini for you to check out, as well as the even larger 1.9 micron size pixels of the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max's main, along with their faster f 1.6 aperture as well. And also, like last year, they also include a telephoto, which this time is now a three times optical zoom, which of course the iPhone 13 mini and iPhone 13 are both missing. Now, in addition to the hardware bump, we also have some new creative modes that Apple has added to all of the iPhone 13 models. Now these are basically LUTs or lookup tables in my mind at least, which photographers use to change the conversion values for color. So you can change a specific green to another shade or even a totally different color. Same for the shades of black and white to affect the contrast as well. Now Apple has put in some simpler versions of these, but they essentially have a few presets that you can select when taking a photo to make it look more contrasty or warmer, cooler, etc. And you can customize each of these slightly to create your own custom versions. Now, it's not something that I would personally use as I prefer to do these types of edits after the fact, if I even do them at all, but some people might like them as a way to quickly change all of the photos you take to a look that you maybe prefer to save time and not have to edit them. So someone mentioned to me how they didn't like how cool the iPhone photos usually are. And so they just used one of these to make it slightly warmer. So now they just use that for their photos to save time and they don't have to edit it after the fact. Now we're at a bar called Spritzen House. And I'm apparently just on a mission to be in the vicinity of a fireplace now. <laughs> but this is one of two popular German beer halls here in my neighborhood. And it usually has giant Jenga and other games. And right now it's just decked out with Christmas stuff, which considering the weather, it's kind of nice. But while we're here, let's talk about some other features that Apple has added. 
including the new cinematic mode, which is basically video portrait mode where it uses software to blur out the background and mimic bokeh. While it does work better than any other video bokeh modes I've seen, and it does allow you to even change the focus and the amount of blur and even do that after you record, which is useful actually, I prefer the look of the normal video, which again has some natural bokeh thanks to the larger sensors in these phones. And I would rather have less and it look more natural than more and look a bit off, at least to my eye. I will say that the ability to rack the focus, as in move it from one subject to another by tapping on them and then it blurs everything else out is actually cool. And I wish that there was just a way to do that in a similar way in the regular video camera. Lastly, the Pro models received an update to shoot in ProRes. Now, this is basically a more professional format for video recording, but I can tell you right now that shooting video in ProRes versus regular video on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, the only two in the series that can shoot in the format, you'd be hard pressed to tell any difference and it uses 30 times more storage. Now, as I showed in my iPhone 13 Pro Max video, the only time ProRes might be worth it is in more challenging lighting conditions, really, where you plan to actually adjust the footage after the fact anyway. Now, you'll notice that you have more details in the shadows and more dynamic range, if only by a bit. So if you wanted to squeeze every bit of image quality out of it and are going to take the time to edit every shot, then maybe it's worth shooting in the format. But otherwise, it probably isn't worth the storage and not a factor that you should consider when you're debating between going for one of the Pro models over, say, the iPhone 13 Mini. It feels kind of like it's raining, but I think it might actually be like kind of snowing. Kind of. I don't like that kind of snow. It's like sleet. It's just like snow in the air, but as soon as it touches something, it's liquid again. It's gross. It's not fun snow, but we made it. Now, tiny phones are super different nowadays, and there is something to be said for being able to kind of touch everything on the screen with one hand without even thinking about it, and even forget that the phone is in your pocket sometimes. But the biggest downside to all that is the battery and it shows on this phone. It is 8.40 p.m. and I took it off at 8 a.m. this morning and we are at 7%. Here's my screen on time and my usage for anyone who's curious about today. Now, of course, today is very much not a normal day. I took a lot of video and a lot of photos on this phone, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at this. And now because of the way that the battery usage screen works, we actually have to subtract all of these from that original battery usage because those were from the night before and they were included in that. And also here's another much more normal day and the screen on time and the usage for all that, just so you have something to compare it to. Bottom line, the battery is as expected, not great. Is it better than last year? Maybe, but it's just, it's the nature of having such a tiny phone. There's a tiny battery in the tiny phone. Now, if you haven't already, just check out my other real world tests. And uh, if you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe to get notified when I do videos. Also the other iPhone real world tests so you can compare that to this. But there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And again, thanks to Navi for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out at the link below to find the best deals on new phones. And as always, regardless, Thanks for watching.